ready for the egg flip. Okay. Right. There you go. Wow. You weren't kidding. <laughs> Three, two, one, lift off. It's four volts. Looks like 50 years after the fact. It's still a good power supply. The next step is that we decided since we have the power supplies going and we know we have tested all the modules in the A tray, you are going to empty the B tray? Right, we had tested also B7 which is the main oscillator. Right. And we want to test B8, right, before we fire everything? Right. right. And B8 is the one that generates the alarms. Carl, you have to explain our, our big limitation right now is that we don't have the ROM, the rope. We don't have any memory. And the erasable memory, we have a problem with it, so we'll have to get into that. So everything has tested good except uh, the erasable memory. Yeah, so uh, this is the erasable memory module. It's uh, got uh, 2K words of uh, core memory in it. and we think it has a broken wire inside. So, uh, we're expecting on uh, every voltage input pin to the memory, uh, we're expecting that pin to be connected to two inhibit lines. And so on, uh, on this voltage pin, it's connected to the two inhibit lines next to it. Uh, and same for this one. But this voltage pin has this inhibit line, but this one is not beeping. So it's completely open, basically. Right. right. So these early erasable memory modules had a design flaw that plagued the program early on, um, where motion of the core stack inside the module uh, would shear the wires in, uh, in the potting material they used uh, for the outer layer. So this is the uh, interior of the erasable memory module, um, and these X's are drawn on the wires where uh, they detected open circuits in their testing of this problem. Uh, and it was happening because this inner core stack was potted with a different material than the outer bit here. The, the core stack was able to move back and forth and these wires were, were sheared over time. Um, and so part of their fix was to replace this outer bit with a different potting material. But uh, because we have one of the early ones, we are susceptible to the problem. Right. Now we have to torch them. You do half half turns each to make it push up the same way. And then once it's loose, you can uh, spin them more. That's where they have circlips in them, so they are held in and push up. Show one of the B modules. See if this thing can focus on it. The B module. So this is also cord with the components being plugged this way and accessible on both sides. And almost impossible to remove from the center. And all welded, it's not soldered. It's still beautiful construction. Our next victim is the alarm module. B8. Don't fly it. Non-flyable. We'll try not to. In the alarm module, one of the things it does is generates 5 volts that are needed for certain conditions. As a reference voltage? Mm -hmm. Right. So it generates 5 volts using this regulator to, to step down from 14. Right. So I'm supplying 14 volts to it. 
it's working and here's the five volt now it's five volt oh, just saying down again that's pretty impressive after 50 years yep. wow we have the alarm module hooked up let me see It's supposed to monitor four supplies, so on the upper left you have 28 volts, on the upper right you have the 14 volts. And so the 28 volts will be the ship voltage. Main bus. Yeah, main bus. Main bus A and main bus B. Exactly. And the 14 and the 4 volts would be generated by the computer. Those are the power supply we just mm -hmm. tested to be working, yay. And uh, on the top here, on the oscilloscope, you have the fault detect. And uh, Carl is going to recreate for us the main under main, main bus undervolt issue. Apollo 13, the movie, when the fuel cell explodes. Have a problem. We have a main bus B undervolt. Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. And uh, Houston, we had a restart on our computer. We had a pink light and, uh, and the restart reset. They report a um, main B main under voltage. Out. So we had under volts, 28, so it went to under voltage. And they would have shown the main bus under volt and there would have been a computer restart which they reported because this alarm went on. Right, so and that would be, so that right now it's at 20 volts it triggered and that would be that circuit that triggered that particular right, alarm. alarm and it's pretty smart because it, it on the other uh, rails it detects both under and over voltage. Uh, Carol, do you want to simulate a medium, an over voltage of the 14 volts or something like that? Sure. And then so we'll start. Point. There you go. Oh. We, we checked that it works on the 4 volts under voltage, over voltage, and yes. the, we checked the uh, 14 volt under voltage and over voltage. So right. we think this module is working okay. Mike, tell us what we're checking here. So we're testing the oscillator alarm, uh, which is a gross health check on the oscillator to make sure that we have a clock. Right. Um, so right now I'm giving it a 40 kilohertz clock, and it's because happy. the uh, the output of this is high, it's not happy with that. This isn't a fast enough clock for it to be happy. Oh, it's not enough. So it, it not only wants clock, but it wants clock of a certain frequency. Right. Or higher. Okay. So if I give it what it wants, which what it wants is 1.024 megahertz. Oh, it wants way higher, okay. Yeah, so if I give it that, then it goes low, which means we have now have a good clock. And which means also we have a good air detecting circuit. Yes. Cool, yep. one more thing that works. This is the final hooray for our alarm module. Nope. No, nope. there's one, still, still one more to do? Two more. Three more. Three more. Oh my goodness, I like that's going to be 10 videos of it. Okay, so <laughs> next step in the checkout of our alarm module is... The scalar fail circuit. Okay. So uh, scalar fail is checking the health of the, uh, the scalar module in the computer, uh, which okay. generates in a clock divider chain all of the clocks needed for everything. Right. Um, so they put this, uh, this circuit is monitoring the last critical clock. So it gets divided and divided and divided and divided and that's the slowest guy which we reproduce with a modern equivalent here for test purposes. Mm -hmm. And so if I turn off our scaler, then Boink. we can get a fit. There you go. And if I turn it back on, and it's working. And the yellow line, okay. Wow, this little alarm module has more stuff in it than I would have suspected. So it's Two more. Three, 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 three more. Three more. Okay.
after dinner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's the warning integrator, mm -hmm. and it's watching for things that happen yes. that are unusual, and it only triggers when it's unusual, but unusual too often. Right. Yes. So uh, the computer was designed to be able to take, you know, restarts or dropped counter pulses and things like that, um, which is fine if they happen occasionally. But if you, you know, get a whole bunch of restarts in a row or drop a whole bunch of counts or something, then that's that's actually a problem, a right. serious problem. So, so this is watching for the too frequent problems. So and so you, you don't need watches for restarts, drop counter. Uh, uh, scalar double is one. A voltage failure. Voltage, so all kind of little failures, and then actually you, you create some, right? So you, yep. you so create a few, so, so there were three, and it was fine. Right. And, it's every, it was, and then you made four, and whoops, it went, oh, no, that's no good. That was one times too many. Then it went fine again. Yeah, they don't have to be consecutive. They just have to be enough of them in a short enough period, which is kind of arbitrary. And it, I just had it spaced out well enough just a little bit ago, so, so I was generating, you know, one every once in a while, and it went high on a single one. Oh, there was. There one. you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a fun one. Every computer should have that. <laughs> yep. So the the yellow line here is the either the CMC or the LGC light in the command module or lunar module control panels. Right. So, um, so, so that, that's a bad light. Bad. I've never Back seen it that. implemented like this. A watchdog that lets a few come through, but mm -hmm. if it becomes too insistent, it yeah. goes, nope, no, no. <laughs> I wonder how they came up with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's how the clever guys implemented it. The, the pulse come here, and they charge uh, in real world, this is connected to here, this is connected to ground, so they charge this 47 microfarad capacitor every time a pulse comes and here you have a comparator if it goes above the comparator it's going to turn the whole thing on and this once gets turned on then the, uh, the comparator voltage goes down so this thing has to discharge quite a bit once it's a bit, it has been triggered and, and as a testament to how dense the uh, this cord with circuits are this I counted all the transistors in the module and it's 46 so that's quite a bit of transistors in that little thing. It's just so minuscule. It's not even fully used. There's a whole part on the left that's not used. Ken, are you the guy that invented hieroglyphics? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to interpret these cordwood modules, which very tricky because you have to match up what's on the underside with what's, what's on top and then try to figure out what is the component running in between the bottom and the top. So it, it looks very impressive. It's like reaching the limits of my vision and my patience. Basically this module is the, the last piece I need to figure out in, in this one and then I'll move on to the Oh, the, 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 one. the data ones. I, I think they're transformers in here but the one piece I can see, there's a transistor, so either it's like a special case transistor or these other ones have transistors, which I'm not expecting. Hopefully by tomorrow I can figure out the mystery. All right. Right here. Okay. Oh, is, is that also welded construction or that's um, solder construction? I believe it's welded construction. So conservatively, so, so um, 20-gauge, you can put 11 amps through it for a chassis wiring, oh, yeah, or 1.5 amps for power transmission. So we just need a pair. It's sold or more wire, so we're good. Okay, I need a third hand here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly there. Exactly there. Should be good. Right. Okay, repair number one. Right. <laughs> well, Mike and Carl have tested the alarm module and it tests fine, so we are about to join the two halves of the computer, 3A and 3B. 
So Min minus memory, right? Right. Yeah, it's just uh, it's. It's not. Oh, without the modules, really, right? Like. All right. And then. And rope. Yeah. So let me just show on the camera where the mm -hmm. two and halves and connect here. And so you see you have locator pins here and here. Mm -hmm. And that goes, but basically this is this would be the memory control, mm -hmm. right? Plus mm -hmm. oscillator, which that's why oscillator alarms, which we left memory control, and which we memories. took off. Rope we don't have. Well, not just memory control, but the memory itself. The, the yeah, and, yeah, and, and the memory here, itself, and then the rope. So we flip this over that, or that over this. I think this, this over that. Yeah. Yeah. Given so this guy's up. Flips like that. All right. And it's light, so it shouldn't be any problem. One, two, four. Okay. And so you see the locator pins, right? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Let's just down there. there, and then you have to put a lot of pressure right in the middle of the center. center. Push it down. No. Hear that click? Right. Yeah. yeah. So then we just need to get some screws in there. Yeah. So and that's, the, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the whole thing? There you go. Yeah. Minus the rope. And minus minus, yeah, a, minus a few from modules. From an outside view standpoint, hmm. it would look complete if... Well, that's true. And then you can see where the rope goes. So that's... The rope module will go in there. And of course... Well, slide in from where it can from the From the back, yeah. Yeah, so it's serial number 14, array 14. And array 14. The, um, the 2003 100-071. The 071 is why we think it's from LTA 8. They were, there was a 2,300 and then the flyable ones are two, the one that flew to 2,300? Uh, 993 was the flown part number, 2,393. Oh, 993. Okay, I thought it was 200. 200 mm. was the, their first attempt at the flown ones, okay. but the 200 computers never flew. Huh. And here's Jimmy, and he has all kind of stuff. <laughs> and not only has stuff, but they are records. And Jimmy, that's a copy of excess, a report of excess personal property. So that's the disposal of an AGC. Right? Exactly. Yes, I received this when, uh, when I, I bought my two tons of uh, Apollo atoms. Uh, this I found this uh, uh, in that warehouse. Uh, I believe it was in the, in, in the gentleman. Uh, his name was uh, Virgil Redgate. Uh, that won all this at, at, at the GSA auctions. I think it was mainly uh, uh, JSC uh -huh. uh, Johnson Space Center is where the auctions were held and. Uh, I was really happy to find this document. And then the, the amazing thing I, I found on it is that it has a price on it, which was price of acquisition. So that's how much they paid for it, I guess, from Raytheon, right? $275,800. So that wasn't a cheap computer at the time, huh? In 1960-something dollars. Yes. I probably did. Which one is that? Is number do we know? Uh, numbers. It's CML block seven. Oh, it says here serial yes, number fourteen. Serial oh, number that's the one we have right here. Yes, that's it. Serial number fourteen. That's the paperwork for the one we are trying to power up. Yes. And it cost two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in nineteen sixty something. Yes. Sixty what you think? Oh, uh, I believe it was sixty-six. Something like that. And it's what is even better is that you had you had the sign the original documents is a copy obviously signed by Eldon Hall. So I have to explain who El Eldon Hall is. And Eldon Hall is the, he was the lead designer of the AGC. And if it hadn't been for Eldon convincing the powers that be to use integrated circuits, we would have never made it to the moon. I don't think. We, we hope that once we get the thing part up, we'll show it to Eldon, he'll flip it. Well, Eldon, we hope, will be there. Yeah. And uh, God willing, he will be. We, we hope so. Voice. We're working hard. We're moving as fast as we can, so. Yeah. Is it, is it working yet? 
<laughs> the entire computer, no, but we're making good progress. Are we there yet? <laughs> we are. Today was a good day. We have come at a critical moment now because we're going to. Uh, we, we've uh, hooked up our first port from the logic analyzer and we're uh, about to take our first trace.